Let's calculate Q values for various nuclear reactions. These are also called disintegration energies. We'll start first with the beta minus dk, where a parent nucleus X turns into a daughter nucleus Y, accompanied by an electron emission, also known as a beta minus emission, and an anti electron neutrino, and some energy called the disintegration energy or the Q value. How can we calculate this Q value? To calculate the Q value, we use the mass difference between the reactants and products. And when we look at this expression above, we only have one reactant, which is just that element X. So we take the atomic mass of that element X minus the number of electrons times the mass of electrons. We cannot ignore electrons because we are emitting an electron here, beta minus particle. Then we subtract the atomic mass of the daughter nuclei minus its electrons minus the mass of the beta minus electron minus the mass of the anti-electron neutrino. We can ignore the anti-electron neutrino and just by rearranging this formula, we see that the mass difference would just be equal to the difference in atomic masses of the parent and daughter nuclei. We can then take the difference in masses multiplied by C squared to get the Q value of the beta minus dK. In the beta plus dK, we follow the same process followed in the beta minus, except now we are emitting a positron and we follow the same process of subtracting the mass of reactants from the mass of the products and um, we ignore the mass of the neutrino as we've done in the previous case. Now rearranging this equation we find that the mass difference during the beta plus or positron emission will be given by the atomic mass of the parent nucleus minus the atomic mass of the daughter nucleus minus 2 times the mass of an electron. We can then take the rest mass difference multiplied by c squared to get the disintegration energy. During the electron capture process, we find that a proton turns into a neutron and um, the general equation is as shown. The mass difference would just be equal to the difference in atomic masses of the parent and daughter nuclei. We can then take the difference in masses multiplied by C squared to get the Q value of the electron capture reactive decay. The alpha of DK is treated in the same manner where we get an atomic nucleus X decaying into a daughter nuclei Y and an alpha particle, which is just a helium atom. The general expression for this reaction is as shown, where X is called the parent nucleus, Y is the daughter nucleus, and the helium atom is the alpha particle, and Q is again called the disintegration energy. This is also an example of a spontaneous reaction. Therefore, we can from this deduce that the mass of the reactants should be the, more than the mass of the products. Now we can the same way calculate the Q value by taking the rest mass energy difference between the products and the reactants, multiplying that with C squared and the final answer will be in joules. You can multiply Q with 931.5 to convert it to mega electron volts. Now let's look at the kinetic energy of the data nuclei and the alpha particle. We realize that the sum of the two will give you the Q value as well. So that's the second way of calculating Q. Now, replacing Ke, which is the kinetic energy with its standard expression, and using momentum expression, noting that the 
conservation of momentum, warrants that the momentum of the total UPA and the alpha particle must be the same. Squaring that expression and um, rearranging to get V of the total nucleus, you can then substitute in the expression of Q to get this newer expression, which is now expressed mainly in terms of alpha. Q value is basically the kinetic energy of the alpha particle multiplied by the mass of the dot nuclear plus the mass of the alpha particle divided by the mass of the dot nuclear. And this expression can be arranged to find the kinetic energy of the alpha particle. The masses can be replaced by the number of neutrons or the mass number. And this expression is suitable for finding the kinetic energy of alpha particles that are emitted during the alpha decay. All right, now that we've covered a little bit of background, let's derive a general equation for obtaining Q, especially for experimental setups. To do this, let us start first by imagining a small particle A that is moving at high speed, bombarding a bigger particle, let's call this particle X, and the particle X will then split into a daughter nucleus, which is then called Y, and another small particle that's called B. What do we know about this system of particles? Right, we can already agree that the kinetic energies of this system will be known and to start with, for particle A, we can write it as half ma va squared. Let's assume that particle x was at rest, hence its kinetic energy will be zero. The kinetic energy of the dot nucleus will be half my vy squared, and that of B will be half mv vb squared. Uh, just to correct the labeling there. And we also know the rest mass energies will be given by for A, MA, C squared, for X, MX, C squared, for Y, MY, C squared, and finally for B, MB, C squared. The X and Y coordinates of the momentum of these particles will be for the first one, 2m times the kinetic energy of that particle. The second particle will not have any momentum. The third particle's momentum will be the square root of 2mk times the cosine of the angle theta. The last particle will have the momentum of 2mk times the cosine of its angle phi. We can do the same for y, component of the momentum. The first particle doesn't have any momentum in that direction, so is the second. The third one will have the square root of 2my ky times the sine of the angle theta. And finally, the last one will have a y component, which is negative 2my ky times the sine of phi. Now, we can use this information along with the information we've gathered from the beginning of this lesson to derive an expression for Q that will be generally applicable to all nuclear reactions, whether spontaneous or induced. You remember that uh, Q is given by the mass difference of the products and the reactants multiplied by C squared. You can also use the difference in kinetic energies between products and uh, reactants if you know them. You can use the energy conservation where you basically say the energy before impact will be the same as the energy after impact. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. And finally you can use the momentum conservation also noting that momentum conservation warrants that the momentum before collision must be equal to the momentum after collision. Use this information to express Q in terms of the variables that would be known should you be doing an experiment of whatever sort. 
we should then be able to obtain the Q value for any nuclear reaction using this equation. This and many other questions will be addressed during the tutorial as well as the assignment which you can find on eFundi till we meet.